What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. When Misha told us she smokes one cigarette a year on New Year's Eve, she audibly said, I'm going to start doing that. It's the one and only <laughs> Teresa. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? And that's so true. I did say that because I'm a former smoker. I don't miss cigarettes, but I feel like after John and I gone wild when we went to Winston-Salem and got really drunk and said, oh my gosh, we're in Winston-Salem. We need to smoke some cigarettes. You're saying too much, Teresa. <laughs> well, I smoked all night. And the next day I'm like, well, I don't need to smoke. So I realized that if I have one or ten, it's not going to put me back on truck. Okay. So I feel like now... When we go on a family vacation with your parents, your mom loves having one. I'll have one with her. My mom Aren't loves... I, who, <laughs> who knew how much my mom and Misha had in common? Ooh. My mom... I don't know if we've told this story in the podcast. I'm sure we, we have. But on New Year's Eve, we have a tradition of either us FaceTiming my parents at midnight or my parents FaceTiming us. It's really whoever beats the other to it. Yeah, we also do it with my parents about six hours prior. Sure. Because of the time difference. Sure, but never have we popped onto FaceTime with your parents and saw your mom smoking a cigarette in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom would not do that. Yeah, it was a few years back and we did the old FaceTime at midnight and it's like dark and hazy in my parents' <laughs> living room. I'm like, Mom, are you smoking a cigarette? And she's like, yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes I like to have a cigarette on New Year's Eve. <laughs> That's great, but inside? Yeah, that was the biggest curveball. I mean, she's li- your mom is living her best life. She sure is, and, and as you should, but I feel like New Year's Eve or New Year's, right? It's you're, you're trying to, you got your resolutions in, you're yeah. trying to put your best foot forward. So I get the whole, this is going to be my last cigarette. If you're a smoker, but if you don't smoke, then why are you having a cigarette? Basically, if you're doing it on New Year's Eve, it's basically the start of the new year. Why are you introducing bad habits right before you start being good again? Oh, I get it. I get it. I would not want to do it on New Year's Eve either. But remember, I, I did have a cigarette with the band in Nashville when it got oh. really drunk and we were trying to talk to them. And yep. I was like, let me just have a cigarette with them. Yep. That was our way in. It was I our mean, way in. I hate cigarettes. Not, I hate It's not good for you, right? But it's a social thing, unfortunately. Oh. And, well. I know a guy who doesn't smoke, didn't smoke, but would carry a pack of cigarettes on him. So when he was at the bar, he could use it as a way to talk to girls. If a girl said, oh, do you you have a cigarette? Do you have a smoke? He'd be like, yeah, here. But he didn't smoke. So for some reason, that made it creepy to me. Yeah. No, I went from like smoking all the time to becoming a social smoker because in in the U.S., you cannot smoke inside, right? In not Czech. Not anymore. Not anymore in Czech. Either, Unless but, it's in my parents' living room. But true. But Czech just passed the law a few years ago. It's not that long ago that you you cannot smoke inside anymore. So for me, I was like, oh, I cannot smoke inside now. What's the point, right? Mm. So I become this social smoker, smoker that I only smoke when I went out at night. And eventually I'm like, well, I don't need to, need, I don't need to even do that. It was super expensive. And I just needed to surround myself with people who don't smoke. And I stopped about a year or so before you and I got together. Mm -hmm. And in that year, I maybe smoked like a couple of times, just very socially. And then I had you around and you don't smoke. And so when you don't see it, I don't need it. But then I have your mom, or she's like, "Do you want to have one?" I'm my, like, mom ah! does, my mom doesn't smoke <laughs> cigarettes. I feel like we're putting out the wrong no, impression. No, she doesn't. She has, she's the occasional, occasional yeah. cigarette. We, so does your sister, by the way. Uh, yeah, my sister's probably more of a smoker than my mom is. But when we do a family vacation, we do once a year a summer vacation. We go to the beach or something, and my dad will and I will light up a cigar. And then I feel like my mom goes, "Well, you guys are smoking cigars. I want to have a cigarette." You and your dad. And you. You and me light up a cigar and your dad is like, you guys have another one? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. It's a, it's a lot of talk about smoking. It's interesting. I had one thought when you were saying how they banned smoking indoors. And then you're like, well, I don't want to smoke outside. So I stopped. I feel like that wasn't the intention to get people to stop smoking. I feel like the intention was, well, you're bothering other people inside oh, yeah. who don't smoke. But I bet a lot of people oh, quit yeah. smoking when they banned indoor smoking and so it it just had this positive effect that probably wasn't even intended for sure like for us in Czech, when i go out when i used to go out 
you sat down, you ordered a beer or wine, and you had a cigarette right there. Yeah. No one cared if the table next to you were eating dinner. Like there was no time limit. There was no, no separate rooms, and you remember it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I you hated it. it. I remember it especially in in America because my dad played in a bunch of bands and he'd play at bars and he would come home and it would he would just stink. My mom would put his jacket or his clothes in the garage for the entire weekend after that because he just stunk so much. But you remember it in, in Czech, the first couple of years you went with me, it was still legal. And remember every single time we got home, we smelled oh, yeah. so much. And my mom, because we had like a nice winter jacket, said you don't just put in the washer, right? Those puffers. Mm -hmm. My mom had to leave the puffers outside for like 24 hours and then Jen and I went out again. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, here we are. We will talk about episode seven of B90. Before we do, a little business. We'll, we'll hit you right off the top with the important stuff. We're on Supercast and Patreon. Woohoo! We're having a great time over there because we are covering 90 Day the Other Way. Guys, that freaking show Guys. is out of control. It This season of B90 is fantastic. So far, the other way, as good. Oh, my gosh. As good with the promise of being as good the, the entire season, if not better, because there are crazy characters. Crazy characters. So... I'm sure you guys are watching. I hope you guys are watching. If you want to hear our coverage, Supercast and Patreon. Yes, guys, please come over. We are having fun. We hope we are. Well, we are. We hope you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're doing audio and video. If you guys are wanting the video, if you want to pop it on YouTube and, and watch, kick back and relax, you can do that at the Family Affair level on both Patreon and Supercast. Mm -hmm. Cousins Club is audio only. Yes. But you choose. And right now we're still doing it. A free seven-day trial for Patreon or Supercast. You can sign up for that free trial. Try before you buy. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality or Married to Reality dot Supercast dot com. Guys, do it. We sometimes post fun family photos or like family history photos. Like me hmm. wearing the Czech papuchki. I wouldn't consider it a, a fun family photo. But it's like a what do you what do you call uh, it? We it's uh, we're behind the scenes stuff or it's uh, throwback photos. Basically, we're not just Ooh. doing it randomly. If something comes up in the pod, yes, and then we say, you know, what, we'll post a photo of it. It's usually Teresa talking about some Czech stuff that I can't wrap my mind around. So I say, prove it with a photo. She proves it, and then I say, well, I got to show our friends. Or me having the photo shoot with a penguin. Stuff like that. Still one of my favorite pictures of me. Stuff like that, where if you guys are on the Patreon or Supercast, you know what we're talking about. So come on over. It's a good time. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram and, and threads at Married Reality Pod. You can message us on Instagram. We post memes sometimes, news, scheduling. It's all on the Instagram at Married Reality Pod. Yes. Also, make sure you're following the podcast right here, right now. It's so easy to do. You won't ever miss a free episode. You'll get it right to your device as soon as it drops. All you have to do is look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's <laughs> as hot uh -oh. as Nicola's dance moves. Pretty hot. <laughs> For, imagine if you practice. That cracked me up so much. <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the better dancers on 90 Day Fiance. Oh, for sure. It's like he just does. He's like the type of person that's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Like maybe five minutes, it's like five minutes later, he's like living his best life. <laughs> yeah, if he practiced a little bit, he'd, he'd really be good. So smash it like it's as hot as those dance moves. It's because, and not to digress a lot oh, in boy. this segment, but it's the same thing with he lives in what's what's the good, good word seclusion from all the good fun stuff right because bit, of yeah. that and until he met Misha literally he thought everything was a sin and then she challenged him on it and now he's like this is fucking awesome I'm, we'll I'm living my best it. life we'll talk about it all yeah. right smash like it's as hot as those dance moves and last but not least if you haven't left a review if you could do that that would mean a lot to us you guys know we love love I have a five-star review I'd like to read here. That's what we do. If you leave a five-star review, if you write something, we'll read it on this podcast. And I got one I want to read right now from our friend Britt1017. Okay? Five stars. All right. Love it. Titled 10 stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Britt. I can't do math either. I love that. 
She writes, love this podcast. John and Teresa are fantastic with their banter, and it's so nice to listen to a couple that can joke around with each other. They also understand that suitcases should never yes. be on a bed. Yes. Shoes shouldn't be worn in the house. Yes. And outside clothes on the couch are a no-no. Yes. It's safe to say we might be slight germ freaks, but I consider us normal. Highly recommend for 90 Day in Maps recaps. If you want to listen to a relatable and down-to-earth couple, 10 out of 10. I love this so much, and it's so true, and it makes me feel normal about myself. Mm-hmm. It's, oh my gosh, thank you so much. First of all, beautiful review. And second of all, everything you said, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we stand for. Abs- normalizing germophobia one episode at a time. That's what we do here. But it's a it. healthy germophobia. Let's just, sure. you just want to keep, all, all I'm trying to do is to keep our home clean. That's it. That's it. I don't go out to other people's houses and ask them to sanitize things. No. But you I want to. You sanitize it for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I do clean sometimes, but. I just, I just want to keep our house clean. That's how I grew up. That's how you kind of grew up too. So. Absolutely, except for when my mom smokes in the living room. Yes, but that's so that's a whole other story. All right. So beautiful of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Britt. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Are you ready to move on from the business and do? Uh, are you ready for some ninety day? By the ways. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we cover so much ninety day. I forgot this is the one that you do your by the ways. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Did I help you? You helped me with one, Teresa. Okay. And a friend of ours helped us with another. Classic friends. You guys always help us. Let's do it. 90 Day, by the way, number one. Thank you to our friend Stacy for the tip on this one. Thank you, Stacy. All right. Big shout out to Stacy. 43 days to go. Little Perv and Liz are getting married. (laughs) Okay. I don't want to be mean. I might, I might sound mean, but they should probably, while they're planning for a wedding, they should also look for a good psychologist and maybe a divorce lawyer too, just to be prepared. Sure, because package from, deal. From what we've seen, how are they making it to the altar? Well, maybe 90 Day the Last Resort really helped them out. Ooh, look right? at that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. So here's what happened. Stacy, she sent in, she called in, she said, check this out. It's making the rounds on the internet. And it's a it's an invite to their wedding. Yeah. It looked, it was a little blurry, like a screenshot. I don't know where it came from or who created it, but it's making the rounds. And so I see it. It's got some information on it. So I have to do my due diligence as a reporter here. All right. I can't, you know, I trust Stacy. I trust our friends, but I can't just run with it. So I do my due diligence. I want to see the legitimacy of this story. And I found some pretty solid and interesting evidence. All right. Share, please. I found Ed and Liz's wedding website on the knot. What? Classic. Yep. yep. So, okay. I don't want to give out the location of the wedding because that's not for I mean, me. You already know. That's not for me to do. I know, but I don't want to be the one All right. putting it out there for, for everyone who's listening. Other than to say it's in Arkansas. Arkansas? Arkansas. As, Arkansas, exactly. Arkansas. <laughs> as Teresa so lovingly calls it, which confirms a rumor that's been circulating for a few months, which is that they moved from California to Arkansas. So- they're there. That's where the wedding is taking place. Did you just say Arkans- Arkansas? I think we should make it happen. We should only make it happen. Thank it's you. Arkansas. Finally, finally right. one of my mess up is actually legit. Yes. Or I like to think. <laughs> no, it's not legit. So the, the state is called Arkansas. But Ugh. I Ugh. see why you would make that mistake. And so I'm, I'm supporting you in that mistake. Oh, Arkan- thank you. Arkansas. It's, it's Arkansas. So, all right. <laughs> Some interesting things I found because like all good wedding websites, there's an FAQ page, a Q&A page, right? Yeah. So I'm perusing like I'm an invited guest. I'm perusing the q and I mean, we did have the site too. We did have the site. <laughs> yes. yes. For our own wedding. Yeah. But this is a wedding I'm not invited to. So it feels somewhat weird on to be on this website, but- Bear with me here because I found some interesting information by digging. All right. What is the dress code, you may ask? Mm Mm-hmm. Our style is bohemian and will be taking place at a barn. No white dresses or all white outfits. You do not have to dress formal, but this is also not a jeans and a t-shirt event. 
Jeans are okay, but please look at Pinterest <laughs> or Google and search Bohemian Wedding Attire. Oh, come on. <laughs> I love giving, giving the Google search advice is a little insulting. Like telling people how, maybe post a If you're going to do that, then just post a picture. Be like, here. It's too complicated saying, don't, don't wear jeans and shirt. I mean, you may if you right. search Bohemian. I'll tell you this, guys, and this is just my personal opinion. Please do not wear jeans and shirts to any wedding. No matter how how laid back it is, mm-hmm. it's still a wedding. Okay. It's right. still a wedding. Fair enough. So then the next question, because the date is August 29th, I believe. So the question, did you mean to book your wedding date on a Tuesday? Yes. This is our anniversary, and it is special to us. Oh. We hope you're able to celebrate with us. So, yeah, I saw the Tuesday. The Tuesday seems strange, and I thought, is this interesting? So I'm glad I'm glad they had an answer to this. I Maybe it's money, too. I'm sure, sure. Arkansas is way cheaper in California. Yeah. Tuesday, it's probably free because no one. No one. Everyone celebrates Taco Tuesday, not a wedding. That's about it. Yeah. So, so, but there's a reason behind it. Okay. I would need to really, really love the couple to take a to day take off. take off a Tuesday. And yeah. especially like, travel to freaking Arkansas. Probably got to take off a Wednesday too because you're going to be banged and up. And Monday. You can you cannot just travel the day off. Who's living in Arkansas these exactly. days? Exactly. Yeah. It's a whole week you're well, taking off. Mar- the mermaid sparkles. Oh, landlocked mermaid. Landlocked mermaid. Okay. Back to this. Last question and perhaps the most interesting. Okay, Theresa. All right. Will this be a filmed event? Ooh. Yes, this will be a filmed event. Anyone uncomfortable being around cameras, do not worry. There will be seating and ways to work around this so you will not be captured on camera. So that's going to be a 90. It seems that's like this. trying mm-hmm. to cash out on anything. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So they're going to be on, they're not, this is not going to be the last resort. So it's going to be on some, are they something gonna have, else. Are they going to have a wedding special? I hope not. But I hope they're not going to put them back on the single life. And then. No, they can't be. They're not single anymore. Exactly. But they could end up on a happily ever after or something. Ooh. I had to say it. I'm kind of curious. And I know we don't love Big Perv. No one does. It seems like. But at this point. I would cover it. We'll cover him on the last resort. Yeah, we got to see if we're covering the last resort. We got to see how that works with the schedule and timing. But that's very I want, true. I want to. It seems I want to. No. I always say like we cover things that we're connected to and we also enjoy, and I think that's what makes our pod special because we talk about something, not just something we just watch and discuss. We talk about something that we freaking love. Something we can relate to. Exactly. Not. I don't know how he we would relate to Big Purr. Yeah, they're but not an international couple. No, but I mean they're getting married, so sure they're married. Exactly. That's why we. <laughs> that's why we do maths. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's number one. Thank you, Stacy. I thought this was a fascinating story, and, and I was happy to be able to learn more. So thank you for turning me on to that story. Number two, and shout out to my wife for this one. Yeah. It's about time she comes to work. What are you talking about? I always give you. Points, not points. I always give you tips Tips that our friends shared. All right. But I always connect the dots for you. The, this- you you hit forward on the email is about all you do. Our friends do the hard work. They come up with the with the dirt and the juicy details. Well, this just- one I came up with on my own. Okay. You sure did. Number two, Danielle and Johan have their own business in the DR. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how much you know about this. I did the deep research. So sit back, relax. Let me tell you about this. The name of the business is Yinsa, okay, which Danielle says is a word she made up in high school by combining the words yoga and essential oils. (laughs) (laughs) All right. But she says Yinsa is more than just yoga. It's a wellness lifestyle that focuses on nutritional and mindful balance, daily self-care rituals, and practices, intentional long-term lifestyle changes, a regular yoga and meditation practice, and the inclusion of joyful cultural experiences that align with your dosha. All right, whatever that means. Okay, so there are online programs, there are skincare products you can buy, and there are also retreats. Yes. And you're in luck, everyone listening. There's a retreat next month, and I think there is still space available if you want to sign up. And there is one in September, too, I think. All right. So August and September. 
Now, you want to know a little bit more about this retreat? Sure. This seven-day, six-night retreat with an optional three-day extension Mm -hmm. will guide you through a transformational journey from going through the motions of everyday life to finding joy in small moments. We will experience daily yoga, meditation, body work, breath work, ceremony, excursions, and unique exercises designed to help us cultivate joy and find peace or samadhi in our lives. Each guest will receive transportation to and from airport, all meals, excursions, and daily activities included in the retreat price. Nice. Do you know the price? I do not. I was trying to find it, but I didn't go too deep. Do you want to guess the price of this? So this is everything but the flights. Seven days, six night transportation to and from the airport, all the meals, the excursions, and activities. I'm going to say uh, 2000 a person. All right. Not a bad guess. If you want your own room, the price per person is $4,800. Are you kidding me? If you want a bunk with like three other people, I think you can get it down to like 3000 That's something. too much. It's a lot of money. That's too much. I would not sign up for this. For 4800 I want my flight. Like first class flights included too. Yeah, yeah. You know what we should do? If we get a couple more people on the Patreon, maybe we take a little bit of that and we hit one of these excursions and we document it all. No. All right. Well, <laughs> I tried. Not for 4800 We can go to Europe, stay at a nice hotel in Rome, go to visit my parents, buy some gifts, and come back to America for that money. You got that right. Yeah. Well, so we're not going to do it. If you guys want to do it, if you want to check it all out, there's so much more on this website. It's out of control. If you want to check it out yourself, visit LiveYinsa. That's Y-I-N-S-A, LiveYinsa.com. Or go to her Instagram page and she has a link tree. There you go. That's probably easier. All right. (laughs) That is 90 Day, by the way. A couple bangers of a story, I think. Oh, yeah. That was one of my favorite 90 Day, by the ways we've done in a while. So thank you to Stacey. Thank you to Teresa. You're welcome. Appreciate all the help. And if you guys got stories, send it in. All right. Shall we do it? The reason we're here, Sunday night, 90 Day Fiance, before the 90 Days, Episode 7. Let's start with Statler. No, Statler and Dumpsy. Also not her real name. Let's just say I know. Let's just say that we had a friend call in, and I don't know if she wants us to give out her name, so we won't do it. But apparently Statler, not the real name. Her, yes. her, her mom's in government. Local government. Yeah, I think her mom is a mayor and like dad is a lawyer or something. And like so that. she doesn't want to put her her real name out there. And so but she, she goes by Statler. So she came up with Statler. Well, but I don't think it's just for the show. Okay. I because uh, let's say the relationship with Dumpsy is real, right? It's Are you calling going her well. Dumpsy? Yeah. What's her name? Oh, Dempsey. I call her Dumpsy. Well, that's kind of rude. But I really thought I was like, okay, what an interesting name, but it's <laughs> it's Britain, so who okay. knows? It's Dempsey. What is it? It's Dempsey. Dempsey. Yeah, it's too it's, early to know. She's Dumpsey, but it's not Dumpsey. I mean, she showed up looking like she had her own parasite, but sure, Dempsey for Dempsey. now. Dempsey. Okay. Ah, yeah. oh, that's a that's a bummer. But anyways, uh-huh. Dempsey calls her a Statler, so. It's the same thing like if you and I had to pretend, there is no way I can pretend call you something else for the recording. And what are you then- talking about? We, we did a whole podcast where we did one episode where you called me Rex because <laughs> <laughs> we thought it'd be hilarious. You guys, if you guys are listening to us for any amount of time, you guys know about our first four into podcasting nine years ago. Why is nobody talking about this? With T and Rex. With T and Rex. <laughs> you called me Rex for about 45 minutes. It was the dumbest thing we've ever done. <laughs> oh, what a good time! <laughs> what a good time! So, okay, I, I did manage to call you Rex for forty-five minutes. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> All for the bit of T Rex. <laughs> what a great idea! I'm sure it wasn't mine. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, but I don't know. I feel like she must be going by Statler for. For a while. I don't think that she came up with this for the show. I don't know. I don't know. But, but anyways, our friend said she got this on Reddit. Classic. Mm-hmm. So interesting, interesting. Yes. Okay. So Statler has arrived in London. Dempsey is not. Dempsey missed her connecting flight from Thailand due to a delay. Right? So 
for some reason, Statler's taking this personal and is like, well, maybe she doesn't even want to be in this relationship. Yeah, Statler. And let's not forget about Statler having an ADHD. Yes. And we have multiple people on the 90 Day shows lately with autism or ADHD, right? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see because they're being open about it and uh, we haven't really had it in the past. Not At least not. They haven't been vocal. Very true. Very true. It. I'm sure there's been a few with ADHD, maybe not extreme, but it's just, it's very common. Yeah. So it's likely. It's, yeah. But it's also something people, if they want others to know, they need to open up about it. Otherwise you can kind of guess, but you can't, you can call someone out on having an ADHD, right? right? So for her, she, she's very honest about it. And what she said is like, she gets she can only focus for a small period of time and she gets super excited, super high, super low, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of affects her emotions too. Sure. Where she kind of reads in between the lines and it's like, okay, oh, she missed her flight. Like, oh, our communication hasn't been great. Like, is she is she even going to meet me, right? Yeah. She's like freaking out over nothing. But in her head, like, oh, this is a big deal. It's a big deal. But she's got to do what she's got to do, which is to head to Manchester, alone she's going to take that time to check into the hotel and kind of reset before she meets Dempsey and try to kind of level off and let's just be thankful for that because what happened in the hotel in Manchester should stay there forever unfortunately it did not because I don't know what's going on with TLC these days I thought hearing David's solid stream the other episode was going to be the last of the peek behind the bathroom door that we were going to get for a while <laughs> no they one-upped it they, they one-upped it with, with Statler's diarrhea. Listen, this is a documentary. Okay, but you don't need to document everything. Luckily, they didn't document the sounds. Or what? You heard them. You yeah. Did? I did not. Oh, it was a waterfall. Thank God for my ears, was, I guess. You do have bad hearing. <laughs> and yes, I would have killed for some bad hearing during this scene. I just thought they were filming her sitting on the can. She's like, also, who, who, who poops with open door? A lot of people, and that's another issue. We're gonna, uh, this is another issue we have to tackle. We've tackled the, the bed packing and, and dirty shoes. We need to tackle the door open while you're going to the bathroom. So let me pause right here because we kind of skipped over the fact that she got to the hotel. It's a normal, it's a small hotel room, right? Which is very typical for Europe. Mm -hmm. You see small hotel rooms in the U.S. too. Like, have you stayed in a hotel in New York City? Or any big city. We stayed in a hotel, well, not to run through our travels, but Barcelona may have been the smallest hotel I've ever stayed in. Mm, uh, yes, the Amsterdam one, super small too. Amsterdam was tiny. And here's a trick for all you travelers. And it's not a, it's not a brilliant trick, but it's something we do because we stay in a lot of tiny hotels and the bathroom is right there. And we're trying to keep the romance alive in our relationship. Forever. Pack a pair of headphones. Which you probably do you probably because have. you travel with headphones. But pop them in and say, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Put your headphones in. And Always. It, it doesn't matter how close the toilet is to the bed or how small the bedroom is. You got your headphones in. We always do. Even if I like, need to go at 3 a.m., I'm like, John, John, <laughs> headphones. No, I do a check. I'll be like, T. And if you don't respond, I'll be like, all right, it's safe to go. Well, I don't usually go in the middle of the night, so I feel like maybe I've done it like once. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what we do. And I think that keeps the romance going. You spray some air freshener afterwards and... There you go. Moving on. There you go. Apparently, men listening, don't use your cologne as yeah. the air freshener. That's what I had been doing for a long time. And then Teresa just started associating my cologne <laughs> with bathroom spray. So yeah. not the best idea. Especially, like I think a lot of you guys... We all spend some money on nice colognes, right? Because they last. Sure. Like the the more expensive ones, the real colognes, they actually can last you for a year. Mm -hmm. So do you spend uh, over a hundred dollars on a cologne, and then we spray it when we poop, and then all I can think of when I smell it on you, I'm like, oh boy, do I need to go? <laughs> Did he <laughs> just go? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, you put it on so, to go to a nice dinner. Now it just smells like the bathroom. Yeah, we, they sell travel size like. I know, sprays. we should have invested in I that. have one. Oh. I just never put it in my travel bag, but I will. All right. So, yes, the, she checks into the hotel. It's a small hotel. We get the diarrhea shot. I don't know why anyone would go to the bathroom with the door open at home, let alone with a camera crew 
in there, but she does. For whatever reason, she leaves the door open so the camera guy Uh, can see it, right? And to make matters worse, this is the day she's supposed to meet Dempsey. Yes. She's like, I might have to wear a diaper. (laughs) (laughs) Well, traveling, and I think traveling and nerves, it can mess up your stomach. And that's kind of what I thought it was. And she says, oh, I'm going to go see a doctor. And I thought, this seems like overkill. You're you're having a case of diarrhea. You're running to the doctor within the first few hours. It seemed a little overkill to me. Yeah, but I think if she wants to or wants to, she's about to meet her potential wife, right? Mm -hmm. You probably want to avoid the diaper so you go to cvs or your lo- whatever your local london pharmacy is and you get a modium you get a couple anti-diarrheals oh <laughs> should i tell the story <laughs> sure share oh boy we're telling a lot of stories already we're telling a lot of poop stories so you heard teresa's flying back from austin debacle yeah well i'll share mine so mine was not mine was not airline related but it was it was bodily and i woke up that morning sometimes you know if i have a coffee it gets the stomach going and i hate when the stomach is going on a flight right i want to be able to settle in i think unfortunately i had a middle seat so that makes ma- that makes matters worse if you got to go to the bathroom you got to nudge someone if they're sleeping it's a whole issue so i said you know what just to be safe i'm going to pop an emodium ad when I get to the airport, I'll be good to go for the flight. No problem. So I get to the airport. I find one of those little convenience stores and I see it's self-checkout. So I go, even better. <laughs> Absolutely going to get the Emodium AD. It's not embarrassing. What's the AD? Anti-diarrheal. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for asking, Teresa, because when I got to the convenience store, I saw that they had it, but it wasn't Emodium AD. It was a generic brand. And instead of being classy and saying Imodium, in big, in big, bold letters, it just said anti-diarrheal across the packaging. And I said, well, you got to do what you got to do. So I bought it and I paid for it and I checked it out. And inside there was two packets, two packets of two pills each. So I said, well, I'm not really, I don't have any issues currently. Let me just take one packet, put the other in my pocket. So I put it in my pocket and I'm walking down the terminal and all of a sudden I hear, sir, Sir, (laughs) I turn around and there's this middle-aged man just waving the packet (laughs) in the air saying, you dropped this. I guess when I was like going to pull out my phone or something to look at where the gate was, the packet popped out. Oh boy. So he's trying to be a nice man. He goes, sir, you dropped this. And I'm going, oh boy, this is embarrassing. And he's holding it out. And right before I'm able to get it, he literally takes it. And looks at, pulls, holds it up to his eyes and looks at it, <laughs> reads it, and then with like a look of disgust on his face, hands it back to me. And I'm going, why did you just have to, why did you have to, re-? and let me remind you, it says anti-diarrheal in big bold letters across the packaging. <laughs> so that's what you do though. You, at least that's what I would have done. I would have gotten some Imodium AD. I wouldn't have ran to the doctor. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, John. I'm sure it took uh, a lot out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Regret yes. it already. That's okay. I mean, you didn't have a diarrhea. You just exactly. thought was, you it was, may. It was preventative. Exactly. So yeah. it's not that bad. But for her, she's like, oh, man, I need to go see a doctor just to be sure. So she went and apparently she has some sort of a bug. She's the a doc- parasite. Yeah. The doctor gave her something and she feels better already. No more diarrhea. So she's ready to meet... Dempsey. Dempsey. Yeah. So she's on the sidewalk. She's waiting. She dropped a pin for Dempsey to come find her. It's like, why not go to a pub, first of all? Why not, why not go to a location and be like, hey, I'm here. I'm not standing on the street corner waiting for you. Also, if she has a sh- bags on her, just meet at the hotel. Well, it smells like diarrhea. It's tiny. But oh, yeah. Just go meet at a local pub or a cafe or a coffee true, shop, true, right? True. You're standing on the sidewalk. Like you're hitchhiking. Well, Stathor probably could use the fresh air. That's true, too. So she's standing there waiting when all of a sudden this blonde British girl appears looking a little disheveled herself. Yes, because she's been on a lot of flights and it's true. It's a journey back from Thailand. But okay, so there's this big meeting. Oh, my gosh. But it's a little awkward. They kind of hug. No kiss. 
They, no conversation, really. Like, it's very, very awkward. It seemed like two strangers. And I get it. They kind of are. But in Statler's mind, if things go well, she's moving there in two weeks. Yeah. So I expect there to be some level of familiarity. There wasn't. They were standing like eight feet away from each other the entire time talking. And the conversation was just so like, are your cheeks red or did you get sunburn? It was such awkward conversation. Very, very awkward. But they kind of compliment each other like, oh, yeah, you look better than I thought. And you look beautiful. You make me blush. But there was no like deeper emotions. Was Statler always this monotone or is this a side effect of the parasite medication? Because she was, I didn't realize how monotone she was Very, until she is monotone. Until she brought it up. She is monotone. Okay. So they're talking. Dempsey gives Statler some very strange gifts. Yes. Well, they're nice gifts she picked up on the road. Vitamins and vegan candy? Yeah. Okay. Vitamins because she keeps pooping. So you got to keep your vitamins okay. in your body. <laughs> vegan. Vegan's good, I guess. Right? You sure. Get some, you get some nutrition from the plants. Sure. Probably good for diarrhea. Sure. I'm just guessing here, guys. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe be- is Statler vegan? Here's the thing. If she is, then it makes sense. I don't think she's vegan because she hasn't mentioned it a lot. And that's the classic sign of a vegan. Sure. Maybe, I'm kidding. Maybe Dempsey vegans. is. Maybe Dempsey is. But yeah, those are just like fun little gifts. That's fine. I'm more curious about like, okay, what do you really think about each other? Because from because from what Statler was saying before, like, oh yeah, I'm so touchy feely, like I love ladies, sex, I this love and to that. Fuck. And it's like, well, really? Do you? Yeah. I mean, she makes one sexual comment about the chocolate. Oh, yeah, maybe I missed it. Or like something in the goodie bag. She's like, oh, is this sexual? Oh. And then she's <laughs> right. like, it could be. Right. But that's that's it. Like she. Where is that Statler we met? It, it felt cold. It didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel lovey dovey or even excited to see the person. And again, yes, she has a parasite, so she's not feeling her best. But I would imagine in that moment of meeting, all that would go out the window. It would be, it would be the adrenaline that kicks in and, and you would run into each other's arms. But that's not what happened. Let's just point out the fact that they were standing there for a long time because when they first met, it was light out. Yeah. And towards the end of the interview, it's dark. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been going on for a while. But finally, they're like, okay, well, you ready to go to the hotel and maybe you can like, maybe you can sleep in my bed. Maybe like you want to share a hotel room kind of joking. And I'm like, I hope she told them to come and clean it. Yeah. But... I'm excited to see if they can shake off the awkwardness and and make it happen. I think they can, but based on the previews, I think Dempsey's lifestyle is not going to be what Statler is used to as a city girl. Yes, yes, and that's a good point. Also, talking about this interaction in this first meeting, it was almost as if they didn't speak the same language. Yeah. But Dempsey is in London. She just has an accent, right? They speak the same language. Yeah. But there was that same awkwardness and lack of conversation that you find when these 90 dayers meet and don't speak the same language. Here's what I think is also going to be an issue. Once Dempsey finds out that she did this before, she was she uh, met someone yeah. from London or from England. Basically, her plan was to move there and then... She was moving too quick for that girl. And it was literally, what, three, four months ago from this? Yeah. That's going to be an issue. At least that would have been an issue for me. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. Let's uh, see. Me too. All right. Shall we talk about ooh, an old favorite? Gino and Jasmine. All yeah. right. <laughs> you, you can't spell canal without anal. <laughs> that's a good one. So that's why Gino and Jasmine are fired up about this trip. Well, I think Gino just needs to take his mind off of the fact that Jasmine and Dane, her ex, are close and talking. Yeah. And you're going to find out just how close in a little Ooh. bit. So Gino's like, I'm an engineer. I always want to see the Panama Canal. So let's, let's go. So they get there and Jasmine's like, baby. Baby, look, look at this. It's so big. Aren't Baby, you? look at that ship. 
Aren't you proud? Your country was the one who built this. Our countries have always had a love history. Oh. Well, Gino is impressed by the canal. He cannot get his eyes off that is canal. Is it canal or canal? Canal. Canal, right? Mm -hmm. What's canal? It's where you put your dog when you go No, on. no, not canal. Oh. So would you still say canal, whatever is like on the street? A for... river? No. Can canal, like the one... Canal Street in New York? No. Kush. Canal that's on the street for, I don't know, if there is a, too much water, it goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, sewer? Yeah, but that's canal. That's a sewer. We call it canal. I mean, there are canals in Amsterdam, right? There's canals in Venice. But canal, you know, there is a confusion. Okay. Canal is a sewer in Czech. Okay. But the, canal, I don't know how many times I have to remind you this podcast is in English. I know, but I'm saying like it's, I, I, I can't believe the Czech language didn't think of this. Because now our canals are all sewers and everyone else has nice and fancy canals like Venice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's a little unfortunate. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so Jasmine's picking up that Gino's acting a little strange. He's really focused on these canals. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how big of a tourist attraction the Panama Canal is, to be honest. It's the shortcut between the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. It's very exciting. For big ships. It's very exciting. I get it's, it. It's like some great engineering. Fantastic engineering. Because like big ships can go through and then kind of like level the water. Yeah. So you go like up and down so you can like enter from one side and exit from the other. It's a big it's a big hit. It's sort of like Panama's Hoover Dam, I feel like. Because you go to the Hoover Dam. We went to the Hoover Dam and you're looking at it. You go, this is exciting. Yeah, but this is not a dam. This is a canal. I understand, canal. but it, it's, still, it's still this engineering True. feat. True. Right? It's it's not a natural wonder or no. anything. But people go and go, oh my gosh, look at this. It's amazing. True, true, true. So Gino cannot stop staring at the, the Panama Canal and he's very fascinated and intrigued by it and Jasmine is picking up on the fact, oh, why isn't he paying attention to me? Why is he being weird? It must be Dane. And she says, we need to work on our communication, Gino. She says, I, I've had an ex, and in that relationship, our biggest issue was communication. Is she talking about Dane? I wonder if she's talking. No, she must, she's probably talking about... Her ex-husband? Doesn't she have kids? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's probably talking about the father of the kids. And she was like, stop, I was married too. Communication wasn't an issue. And Jasmine goes, well, you had a boring relationship. Yeah, uh, she loves firing back and being being mean. And then she gets pissed that Gino even brought up that she that he's had a past, and it's like you brought up yours first, Jasmine. Jasmine is the definition of a hypocrite. Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad the producers called her out on it last time. Yeah, they're start. Yeah, they're starting yeah. to call her out, and, and she does not realize. She will not accept that she's a hypocrite. No. So Gino is like, all right. So they kind of sit on the side. And start talking. And you can see how frustrated Gino is like with everything because it took him like, five minutes to open a granola bar. <laughs> I've never related to Gino more than in that moment. We've all struggled to open up a, a nature's valley, haven't we? Yeah. it's If you have wet hands, it's bit, really hard to yeah, do that. Or grease or water on your hand. Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah, but Jasmine's trying to like baby him and open it for him. But he's a big boy. I can do it. So he does it finally, has his granola bar. So he's like, I have to be real with you, Jasmine. <laughs> I, I just love how him being able to open up the granola bar gave him the confidence he needed yes. to <laughs> confront Jasmine. If I can open up this nature's valley, I can do anything. And he straight up asks her about Dane. She's like, Gino thinks there is something going on because... He knew about Dane being her friend, mm -hmm. but she never said that Dane was her ex until her friends with big mouths mm -hmm. spilled the beans, right? So Gina's concerned. He's like, okay, do you, is there anything going on between you two right now? Like, this is just not okay that you didn't tell me while you're hanging out with him. How, how often do you hang out with him? Well, and, at least once a week. Well, she starts laughing. Which yeah. pisses me. Like the nervous laughter yeah. is a little telling. Like, okay, maybe she's not banging Dane, but she knows she's doing something that she shouldn't be doing. Oh, yeah, for sure. So she says, I'm, I'm not cheating on you. He's just my friend. 
And she was like, you always tell me I can't be friends with my ex. And this is where Jasmine's like, well, they never shared nudes of me with his ex. He's a gentleman, so don't compare him to you. Yeah, I think Gina should be worried or should just be like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Like, you're such a hypocrite. Let's just end this right here. And if we're not going to end this, you are signing a prenup. Yeah, I don't see how this relationship gets better. No. no the, the personalities of either of these people would have to change so much. Oh, my gosh. To, to get along for the next 30, 40 years mm-hmm. that I, I don't see how it would ever happen. And this is not even it. So besides Dane being her ex and her hanging out with him at least once a week. And if she, person, says, if she says at least once a week, you know, that means at least three times a week. Yes. In person or on FaceTime. So it's not just, oh, let me quickly talk to my friend on the phone or text him. You see each other. Then he lives in the building, in the expensive building that Jasmine needed to live in, that Gino pays for. Yeah. And why do you think Jasmine needed to live there? Because she wants to be near Dane. And here's what I think. I think she does love Gino. I think they broke up with Dane because she's nuts. Mm -hmm. But they stayed friends, I guess, somehow. And I think she still finds Dane attractive. Sure. And so being around him maybe helps her with the stuff with Gino that she's with someone who's not as attractive, yet Gino doesn't want to have sex with her. So I think she's trying to compensate that. And just hanging out around Dane, someone who she banked and banked even after the relationship. Oh boy, friends with benefits. And that's what I'm like, she's definitely banging him or have has banged him at least once since she's been with the Chino. Uh, I don't know if I'd go that far. She admits she thinks about it, which is terrible. That is terrible. That's why I'm like, okay, if you admit to this. You probably, you probably banged him. I'm not saying now. Maybe she did when they just were, started talking with Gina, right? Yeah. She, d- uh, I can see why she would want to be friends with him otherwise. If there was not like a little sexual tension or her not thinking about him. Like, I don't, why yeah. would you want to hang out with your ex? I don't see the reason to hang out with your ex Unless you have zero friends, but we've seen her with the butt brigade. She we, has friends. She, she lives with her sister. Right. She's got other people in her life. There's only one reason to be with. Well, there's two reasons to be friends with Dane. One, you want to bang him. Yes. Or two, you want to make Gino jealous. Either of those reasons are bad reasons. There are three reasons. Okay. The third one is like you are banging him. Sure. Okay. There you go. So no matter how you slice it, the fact that she's bringing this up and and rubbing it in Gino's face, definitely not going to make Gino want to bang her. Like I think she thinks, oh, uh, me telling Gino that I think about Dane because he doesn't bang me because our sex life isn't good. But if I, if I tell him that I'm thinking about Dane, he'll want to bang me. No, no guy's going to be like, oh, really? You want to bang another guy? Okay, let me bang you instead. And here is the craziest part that Gino doesn't even know. Let's say, all right, he's going to accept her being friends with Dane, who's her ex, right? He's going to accept the fact that they see each other once so we can talk. He doesn't know that the way she talks to him is way cuter In a way, then she talks to Gino. She's like, oh, you baby, my baby. I love you, baby. baby. Have a good day, baby. She's never this cute with Gino. She just yells at Gino. Yeah. It's all bad. It's very bad. It's all bad, and I feel like it's only going to get worse. Yes. Gino, he really needs to either, they both need to sit down and be like, you know what? Let's forget the past. Let's move on and focus on us, the communication. And enough with this bullshit. Enough with you being friends with your ex. Enough for me to do anything to piss you off. Let's focus on each other, right? And be honest. Yeah. Or they need to end this. Well, they need to end it if Jasmine can't drop the fact that Gino sent her nudes. If that's always going to be the issue. Yeah. You got to end it, right? What happened in the past is in the past. And if you don't ever have to forget, but you kind of have to forgive. And so Jasmine is not letting go of this. So then you have to break up. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to move on happily together. For sure. Okay. I think that's a good place to take a break. All right. When we come back, we'll travel to the Holy Land with another one of our favorite couples. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back in a second. Nicola! (laughs) She calls him 
that. She's like Nicola. Yeah, that's his name. I know. I think it's Nicola. Yeah, that's, well. Ricola. That's how I remember it. Oh, my gosh. Me too. Ever since you said it, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I wish that when they went to the, that mountaintop in Haifa that they did that. They should have re <laughs> recreated those commercials. What is it? What is the word for when you go in the mountains and like a, in the Alps? Yodel. Yodel. Oh, yeah. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is. Although, is that yodeling? The Ricola, they have that big horn. Well, they do, but it's uh, very close to yodeling. Oh. Okay. That's how I hear Think it. You, you wear the same outfit. Yes. You, you wear the same costume. We should go in New Orleans in the Alps one day. One day. And maybe right. that's the place I milk the cow finally. Maybe. Where so a lot we? of them. A lot of them just free, free range, running <laughs> around, just snacking on the good grass. Weren't we in the Alps? We were, but we didn't go up and hike. We oh. were in um, Salzburg. Okay. All right. You ready to come back? I'm ready to come back right. to Israel. All right. And we're back. Oh, here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello, Jonathan. <laughs> hello, Teresa. And we're back. We're back. We're back to talk about Misha. And Nicola. Nicola. All right, here we go. It's been a few days since Misha's been in Israel, and she's got mixed feelings about the trip so far. She yeah. loves being in the Holy Land, but struggling with the fact that Nicola doesn't want to introduce her to the fam just yes. yet. And this is very, this whole segment was very interesting to me because she is a devoted Catholic. It's her main job. That's how she gets paid, right? She sure. works for the church. She, she prays. She does all that. Yet she still likes to have fun. It's for and business and pleasure. Yes. And, yeah. and that's great. You do you. But it, when you think of someone who's extremely religious, and this is just me talking, guys. Don't give me shit. I always feel like, yeah, these guys just are home and pray. They don't have any fun. Because that's just how I stereotype in my mm, head. They have fun. They just don't put it out there. I guess. But listen, you do you. I don't... I support everyone's decision to be religious or not be religious. But I love that she's like, listen, I'm a devoted Catholic, but doesn't mean I cannot have fun. Sure. Right? Sure. Absolutely. So... They're, they're in Haifa, right? It's this trendy city, as Nicola says. And they arrive to this venue. And at first I thought, oh, are they going to an event? Are they going to Nicola's family's wedding? Or? I thought it was a hotel. I thought they uh, arrived to a hotel. A hotel. And they get to this venue and Misha sees a girl in a wedding dress. I don't think it was a venue. I think it was a mountaintop. I think there was a, a viewpoint they arrived to. Well... Misha goes, what? What is this? Uh, that's a dress, and, and Nicole's like, that's yeah, it's a, it's a it's wedding. A, it's a wedding. It's it was wedding clearly dress. a wedding dress. And Misha's like, well, I, I need to fit in. I need to wear a dress. Yes. Mind you, Nicola, he's wearing an ill-fitted, uh, ill-fitted t-shirt, jeans, and sneakers. Yes, his classic outfit. But wouldn't you rather match your? partner than a random wedding that's taking place in the corner if you look at misha we always say she's a very beautiful lady right if you look at her you know she cares about her appearance but she was wearing what she was wearing and she looked fine she looked good like look, i love good sweatpants and a t-shirt when you go to to a viewpoint i don't even think she was wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt i think she had more of a casual attire on yeah but again i want to match my partner so if we go to dinner and you're wearing, and it happens quite a lot because you'll get dressed first and you'll put on a nice outfit, a fun, stylish blazer or something. And I'll go, oh, okay, I guess I can't just wear my joggers and a t-shirt. Yeah. I'll say, all right, let me wear a button down and some chinos or something. I want to match your level. But also you want to match your surroundings, but the surroundings were, it was a city. There was all sorts of different attire happening. She just sure. happened, she saw a wedding going on as soon as they parked the car. And she goes, oh shit, I need to jump into the back of our car and change my entire wardrobe. Yes, guys, you, I, I totally see what, hear what you're saying because I never thought of it. I always, for me, I dress to impress you. Yeah. And myself, I like dressing up for occasions. And after COVID, when I was home all the time wearing PJs, I do like to dress up when we go out, right? Sure, because I sure. bought all the clothes that I didn't wear for years. But at the same time, you're so right. You kind of dress up to 
level each other up. But like if I saw you dress up first, I wouldn't probably wear my jeans with holes. There are certain jeans. There are certain destinations where there's really one dress code. Yeah. Big Perv's wedding, apparently a bohemian, right? <laughs> but if you go to a brewery, you could show up in shorts Anything. and a, in a tank top, or you could show up in a nice button down yeah. and, and chinos. So those types of destinations, I feel like I want to match you. I don't yeah. want me showing up in a blazer and you showing up in a cut off tee. Yeah, that's true. We always match each other. Like this morning, we went to get our coffees in our pajamas. <laughs> it, was a, it was a big, a big outing for us. Trace is like, well, let's go to the Starbucks drive-through in our pajamas. Don't do anything. Don't don't brush your hair. <laughs> let's go just as we are now. And I go, okay, but you realize you're wearing Bucky's underwear. And Teresa said, well, these are my pajamas. And I said, okay, well, we have to walk from our apartment to the car. People will see us. And Teresa, let's just go. And, of course, we came across multiple people on our way to the car. It was great. I think they looked at us and said, these guys, so much confidence with the way they are. I think more so they looked at us and said, oh, look at this booty call who didn't bring <laughs> clothes because you were wearing my sh- my sleep shirt. Yeah, and the and the Bucky's shorts are men. And the Bucky's shorts. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back to, back to Israel. Yeah, you made a great point. I never thought of it. Thank but you, you made a great point. Thank you. So they're they're at Haifa. Haifa? Haifa? I think it's Haifa. Um, very important for Catholics, Nicholas says, because it's on Mount Carmel. There's a lot of history there. It's on the Mediterranean Sea, but it's cool. There's also restaurants and bars and culture. Let's not brush over the fact that Misha changed in the back of a car. Yeah. Basically had to probably remove her cl- outfit just sitting there in a bra and undies but because of her history being a newscaster sure she can do this very fast and any 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 type of location anywhere and even nicola who was very concerned about her doing this was impressed by the speed (laughs) yes okay so she's changed and now they they hit the scene and they're taking some selfies and they're talking and then misha asks if nicola has talked to his brother yet about meeting the fam. And he did text him. Yeah, yesterday he says he texted. But Nicola says, since you've been here, you've kind of been rushing me. Okay, I talked to my brother, but I feel like you're rushing me. We have our whole life together. Nicola, you're in your mid-40s. You've been virgin for your entire life. Don't you want to move, speed things up? Right? I feel like, yeah, if I was him, seeing Misha naked in the back of my car, I'd be like, let's just elope right now. And especially... If you are a devoted Catholic, I feel like you want to get married. Like you shouldn't. I don't see extremely religious people to be like. You know what? Let's take five years to get to know each other. I think they feel like the bond between them is because of God. Why would you wait, right? I think you saw the way he, she destroyed that hotel room and was like, you know what? I don't know if this is my future. I'll tell you this: what she did with the hotel room, putting her clothes everywhere, it's messy. I'm not this messy, but I'm also a woman. I also pack a lot of shit. So I get it. The issue is that Nicola has never shared a room with a woman before. <laughs> Very true. So for him, it's like, what is happening? Very true. So, okay. Nicola is like, we have our whole life together. And Misha says, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to figure out right now, as if we're going to spend our entire life together. And I can't think about my life with someone if I feel like they don't listen to me and listen to what I need out of this relationship. And Misha says, if I go home and we're not engaged, this is over. Mm. Which is new for Nicola because apparently Misha's never given ultimatums like this before. She always said, oh, we're going to go through all our obstacles together. But now she's saying if we're not engaged in the next week or two, this thing is over. So let's not forget they've been talking for seven years. That is a long time. Yeah, so I see Misha's point, and at the same time, she also is in her mid forties. It's not like they're twenty, and they're like, "Oh, we can wait. We have all the time." Like, yeah. you want to move on with your life. So I get why she wants to know whether they can make it or not. So being engaged isn't married, but being engaged is like, "All right, let's commit and see if we can make it to the altar." You said. Oh, Nicola's 40-something years old. He's a virgin. Don't you think he wants to run to the altar and get married already? Yeah. And at first I go, yeah, I I could see that point of view. But also, he's gone half of his life or more as a single man. Yeah. 
maybe he's scared of commitment. Maybe he's scared, oh, my life is going to change. And so now he's starting to realize, oh, things are getting real. Maybe this mm. is not what I want. Interesting. Right? Well, things are getting real and things are getting complicated for him because Misha is not, um, I, I don't know if this is going to sound right, but the way I mean is like, she's not a simple woman. She's not a woman that's just, I'm devoted to God. All I need is some clothes and my Bible, right? Yeah. Misha is a woman who besides loving God, she loves taking care of herself. She loves having fun. She loves going out. She loves doing this and that, right? She's a and little I more think, nuanced. And I think that's for Nicola. That sounds too complicated. Like, I think he would prefer someone way simpler with one thing in mind, and that's God. Yeah, yeah. And as we said at the top of the show, that's not necessarily Misha. We see them downtown Haifa, which is... Nicola's hell because it's nightclubs and bars and a bunch of heathens, but Misha's loving it, right? And yeah. she she loves getting Nicola in this different atmosphere to get him out of his comfort zone, to try to get him out of his shell a little bit. And they start talking about, oh, what's the last, when's the last time you went to a bar, Nicola? 20 years ago. Oh, Nicola. 20 years. Nicola says it's a sin to go to a nightclub. It's a sin to smoke cigarettes. And that's when Misha goes, well, once a year, I always have a cigarette on New Year's Eve. I mean, why not? Here's the thing about God and being religious. I feel like if you fuck up, you pray for forgiveness, right? So mm -hmm. if she smokes a cigarette and prays after saying, oh, I'm so sorry, should sure. be good. And Nicola should be like, you know what? We all make mistakes. Isn't this all what it's about? Yeah. So Misha's like, well, I also love to dance. And I don't think it's a sin to go to a nightclub and dance. I think it's just a it's a good time. Because for Nicola, he sees nightclub and dancing in a nightclub as a sin because you go down and you rub your body against other people and you flirt and you might sin. Like you might go home with someone else, right? And having a one night stand, which how does he know this? Well, it's maybe what he sees on his television. But more so than... Maybe you go and you, you rub shoulders with someone. And maybe you go home and you have a good time. I think he wants to use religion as a way to control Misha. Ooh, he, wants to, he wants to say, no, we don't do that. We don't go to nightclubs because it's a sin. But really, he's thinking, don't go to nightclubs when I'm not around because you might hook up with another guy. And I want to be able to keep you from doing that. True. But luckily, Misha has a say. A lot of it. Yeah. And she's like, no, I'm going to challenge you on this. What if I like going to clubs because I like to dance and that's it. Mm -hmm. I go there to dance, to move my body. And Nicole's like, well, I don't know. And she kind of throws it back at her kids. Like, okay, what if my kids, they're right. their age. What if they want to go out to a club and have fun? Are you going to judge them? Are you going to tell them they're sinners? And I'm glad that Nicola goes like, well, I'm not because if I judge your kids, I would create issues between you and I. Right. No, that was that was the right answer. And so Misha says, well, why don't we just go to the club? There's one right here. Why don't we go and, and see what it's like? And Nicola's like, just to see. Okay, just to see. Five minutes, but I'm not going to like it. Five minutes later, Nicola's like, mm -ts, mm -ts, it was the, the editing here was so good because it was like, okay, five <laughs> minutes, but I won't like it. Hard cut <laughs> to Nicola just full out raving. He's like loving it. Because you think the edit would be like, okay, five minutes, but I won't like it. And then you cut to them like walking into the door yeah. and, and maybe getting a drink and warming up. No, hard cut to just him fist pumping like GTL, Jersey life. short, living his best life. It was so good. He's like, I do it for you, Misha. I do it for you. <laughs> so into it. I loved it. And it's. For Misha, that was great because she's like, I can see that if he let loose a little bit, he can have fun. Like he doesn't, and he needs it. He does need it. You can still praise God and have fun at the same time. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could actually see this couple working, which, uh, you know, I can't say for most of these couples. <laughs> well, but we'll see. But for some reason, I don't know why, and I guess I have the answer, he feels ashamed of her. And I think it's because... She was married and she is she divorced. She was married. She was divorced. And I think that's why he, not being ashamed of her, but being ashamed of, oh my gosh, like I fell in love with someone who is a sinner, 
and if she cannot get it annulled, right. it's not going to work. So maybe that's why he's not telling his family about her. That's an interesting thought, right? Why even bring this up? Why get her involved in my family life if she can't get this yeah. annulled and we can't get married in the church? Because otherwise, like, she has it all. Like, she is, I don't want to judge by looks, but let's let's do it. Way better looking than he is. She is gorgeous. She has the same fade, right? They've been talking for, what, seven, eight she, years? She, yeah, seems smart. She, yeah. So she well has spoken. It, she has it all. There is not even a single reason for him to be ashamed of her or wanting to hide her from anyone. He should yeah. be putting her on a pedestal and share with the world. Exactly. But I think because of the fact that she is a divorcee and her divorce or her ex-marriage is has not been annulled yet. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. I wouldn't be screaming Ricola from the mountaintop. I would be screaming Misha from the mountaintop. Oh, yeah. If I was him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about Ty Ray. Oh, Ty Ray. Oh, you sweet, sweet boy. Sweet, sweet Ty Ray. I, I'm glad he has his sisters, but at the same time, he needs to be the hit with a with the truth harder. I don't know how how much harder than what's been happening, but he's still living in a fantasy world thinking that Carmela s- is still real. I don't know. We watched so much 90 that maybe I'm conflating things. In the very first episode of the previews, didn't we see him get on a plane going to Barbados? He went to Barbados. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I mean... Going to try to meet Carmela. Oh, yeah, he's going. Okay, so maybe he's that's going. maybe that's going to be the reality because, he needs. Because, okay, so let's just talk about it, not to jump around. They're, him and Lashanti are going to see a private PI, right? Yeah, him and a his private sister. Eye. Yes. Yeah. And for Tyra, he's like, this will be the moment of truth. Yeah, they needed some help with the Carmela research. Yes. The sister Lashanti did a lot of the heavy lifting, but they want to go even deeper. Yeah, and poor Naive Tare, he still believes that Carmela is real and he's just talking to her jealous husband. Yeah, so Which, let's say this is true. How is this better? Like, how is this any because good? Because if she exists, I guess. you're saying there's still a chance. So they get to Lewis's office. Lewis is the PI. He's been a PI for 20 years. And Lewis tells the camera, oh, he's found some information. Ooh. He goes... So I love how he talk. He talks um, like this is his first time. Really, he's like, so I got on the computer, and <laughs> it's like, well, that's a good start, Lewis. So I got on the computer, and I began running some phone numbers. Are you ready? The phone numbers were either drop phones or set up for texting only. Then I did some tracking of the email, and I, I found out that it came back to a PayPal account, but it was private. So I did reverses on the photos you gave me and we got a hit. And Lashanti yes. goes, was it more escort sites? And Lewis goes, no, this was a little raunchier. She's a cam. She's a, she's a porn star. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the real Carmela, the one that has never spoken to Tyre. And here's my big question. Does she know that she's being featured on the show? Just being she like revealed, be like that she is an escort and a porn star. She well, she she is right. She is. Yeah, but I'm, I'm wondering like, publicity. did they reach out to her? Be like, hey, by the way, we're gonna so. be or because she is out there, her account is out there, it's public. They don't have to let her know. I don't know. I think they. I think they must. Have. They probably so. She is a camp porn, porn star, and this is not what Tyre wanted to hear. Lewis goes, here's what I think we have. Check out this Twitter account, Sweet Carmella. As you scroll down, she's got some contact info. She's got a PayPal number, which does not match the PayPal you gave me. And then it says her name and United States. And then Tyre goes, it says she's a fetish queen. <laughs> <laughs> which is also going to be my other intro for you. But I remember what happened last time. I involved Carmela in your intro. So yeah, don't don't mention, don't put me together with a porn star. I mean, not, we did not go there. I mean, no you could be one, know, Teresa. You could be one. Thank you. I was gonna say, no one needs to know what we do behind the closed doors. Yeah, it's only for Patreon and Supercast now. 
it's only for the two of us. I'm just going to be honest with our friends or we're going to have some wild folks sign up for the <laughs> Patreon. Wow, the numbers are really spiking after <laughs> this episode. <laughs> yeah, no, guys, no. So, okay. Finally, Tyre <laughs> is realizing maybe the person texting me in the photos are two different people. Yes, and first, before he said, he's like, this is not the Carmela I fell in love with. Well, they started watching a video, I guess, off of Sweet Carmela's web page and and he's like yeah this is not the the carmel i fell in love with doesn't sound like her so he's realizing this is not the person he's been talking yeah, to and he's like i'm mad that someone got me with a photo of a porn star and then he comes up with a new theory oh, boy. he's like i'm suspicious <laughs> that carmel and christian might be working together this is yeah tyre tyre sweet tyre you need to like he's got an imagination on him for sure. You need to stop imagining, accept the truth, and move on. But Lewis liked this idea. Lewis is like, it's possible. They do work in gangs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lewis is probably like, if you think that, let me let me look yeah. deeper. Yeah, keep paying me and I'll keep searching. Yeah. Well, it's time for Tyre to come clean to the rest of the family. And that means to his sister, Sharpea. Yeah. And I, I, his mom. Yeah. So they're home. He's like, Sharpea, do you want to, do you want a beer? You got a, I got a crack of beer. And you want a Red's hard apple? <laughs> I need to come clean about something. So uh, Tyre goes, well, I messaged the real Carmela. Cause now that he realized it's not the one he's been talking to. He goes, I messaged the real Carmela, but she didn't respond. Yeah. If he didn't pay her. I was going to say, I mean, that's rough when, when an escort won't even respond to you. Well, I, tough. I almost feel like, okay, if she knows her name is being used for a show, I would almost think she would respond or unless she's like, all right, I use the show, use the name, but I'm not like doing anything. Yeah. Like, I'm not communicating with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Because her pictures are out there. She's got to know what's going like on. If we went ahead and Google her, we would find her. We would find right. out all the escort sites. Right. right. So there's, that's my point. Can TLC just roll with it? Because they blur it. Like, they don't mm. show the full thing, right? We don't see her last name. We don't see the pics. Mm. We saw the pics that Tyre had, though. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. But not a, a lawyer question. either, but I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure it out. Guys, if you know, let us know. Yeah. Is the real Carmel aware of what's happening? Or because it's public, all the websites are public, her photos are public, right? Do they just roll with it? Yeah. Interesting. We'll see. So they sit down, everyone sits down, and Tyre says, four years ago I met this girl online. She lived kind of far away, like all the way in Barbados. That's why I went there last year, but she never showed up. We kept talking, though, but that's not its not even the half of it. Production told me I was being catfished by a man. And mom and Sharpay are just like, what? Yeah. M- and mom is kind of like, so when I was in the hospital... You went to Barbados to meet a girl? <laughs> we all thought you just needed a break from everything. And they're so confused. And Tyra goes, well, I went to a PI yesterday and I was told Carmela is a pornography model. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I'm thinking I need closure. So I may go back to Barbados. I do have a bond with this person, whoever they are. We were thinking of starting a business together. <laughs> What? And then he's like, I still believe it's a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet Tyre. Sweet, sweet Tyre. Oh, get on that plane. We got to see what happens. I need to see Tyre in Barbados. I need to see what happens. Yeah. And listen, whether it's a woman or a man, I think he's just trying to figure out who's the person he's been talking to for so long. For so long. And I get it. I get that. You need closure. I, I can get that. Or... Maybe the relationship can keep going. Sure, whether like, fr- a friend or romantically or business partners. Exactly, because I feel bad for Tyre from what he saw when he was talking about his life and his upbringing, and now he's like, I'm, I'm the only one who takes care of mom. Like he has nothing really going on for him. He's just there for his mom, helping her out, dedicated, and all that he had was this Carmela, right? Yeah. Or. Whoever the person is that he just connected with. And I get it. I freaking, my favorite thing about a relationship, one of our my favorite things is us talking. And we talk all the freaking time. We talk on the pod. We talk 
all the time and John travels. Guys, we even talk off the pod, if you can believe <laughs> yeah. that. We text each other all the time in a healthy way, not like Brandon and Mary, right? Yikes. But we communicate all the time when something Patreon. happens to me, good or bad, you're the first person I need to tell immediately. Sure. And I can see how this sure. just keeps him going because it's beautiful to have. Yeah. I, yeah that's I, been a support system for how absolutely. many yeah, for, for how long? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on them. Let's, all right. Let's go to, to a sadder story that's maybe becoming a sweeter story. Uh Riley and Violet. Violet has agreed to hang out with Riley once again. And I think I realized what I what I find so strange about their interactions. They they're always meeting up at tourist sites, but never together. They go alone. Oh. So like Riley will be there and then she comes and meets him. And like that's not how relationships work. Like go meet him at his hotel yeah. and go together. Or meet her at her house and go. The fact that he's like, all right, I'm going to go to this destination and wait for you. Yeah. It's like a, she's an escort or something and and, and she's just showing up for a date. That's yeah. what I find so strange about this relationship. Yeah. No, you're right. So well, today. They're meeting at the war museum, the Vietnam War. The, and the for war, Riley, yeah. who is an ex-military guy, right? That's definitely something he wants to see. Because yes. we all know about the Vietnam Vietnam War. Yeah. Yeah. So. Special place for him, this this War Remembrance Museum. For for Violet, she's less interested in, in the sights. She's there to talk to Riley and let him know how he's been acting rude lately. Yes, and so apparently her mom thought that Riley is too jealous and controlling. And Riley says he's under, he understands where she's coming from. And especially when Violet mentioned that he didn't bring anything for mom. And Riley's like, well, I didn't know what to bring. I I didn't know what to buy, so I, I just didn't. And Violet said, well, you could have asked me, which is true. It's true, but come on. You, we've talked about it before, you were very clear with me when we went to meet your parents. Here's what you should bring. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't show up empty-handed to someone's house, but... In a different country, cultures are different. And so maybe bringing alcohol is wrong in Vietnam, but bringing it in America is very welcome. So sure, I could have said, oh, I'd like to bring something. What should I bring? But also you could volunteer that information. Hey, uh, it's very common to bring uh, a bombonera. Yeah. And what is that how you pronounce it? Was it was a bombonera. It was like chocolate candy. Like and a Russell Stover. And yeah. Co- and coffee. Yeah. Like, I- we, like some... Check so you don't need to bring big gifts, right? It's not about big gifts. It's about more like you're thinking of someone and usually you bring something that you can all enjoy together. You can enjoy a coffee. You can enjoy the candy. You can enjoy a bottle of wine or whiskey, right? Yeah. Like it's, that's usually what it is. Like you don't just bring, you wouldn't, if you bought my mom a sweater, I would be like, well, she's probably going to be like, why is John buying me a sweater, <laughs> right? Yeah. I... I don't think the ball is in either person's court. I think it's more of a jump ball situation where, sure, Riley could have said, hey, what should I bring? But I think Violet could have also said, hey, it'd be really cool if you brought my mom this, that, and the other thing. Well, I'm pretty sure you asked me the first time. You said, "Am I bring, should I bring something for your parents? It was also Christmas time. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. kind of nudged me in the direction of like definitely come with yeah. gifts. But every year when we go... You lately you started bringing my parents uh, bourbon, which Whiskey, they both yeah. love. Yeah. And the bonbonera for Babishka, we keep it going. She loves her sweets. Sure. But it's just it's just polite to bring something. And again, it's not about money. It's about the gesture. So Thought that counts. Yeah, he definitely should have asked her. Or if he didn't, she should have mentioned it. Or if if you didn't ask me, I would be like, hey, I would definitely bring it up because. It is very common in the Czech Republic, and I would never want to put you in a situation that my parents would be like, oh, John didn't think of bringing us anything when he's visiting. And not that they would, but I didn't even want to go there. But it's also a reflection of you. And so Riley showed up empty-handed. It's a reflection of Violet. Oh, yeah. It's mom looking at Violet going, this is the guy you chose to be with. So why not set him up for success? If I showed up to your parents' house empty-handed and was like, what's up? Where's the alcohol? It would Your parents would look at you and go, this is the guy you're with? So you set me up to look good. In yeah. turn, you look good. Yeah. Of, oh, wow. She's with this really sweet guy. So I, I, I am. <laughs> yes. I think 
sure Riley could have asked, but I think Violet also could have helped him. Well, I think he should have asked, but if he when he didn't, I think she should have mentioned it. Let's say the morning off, we'd be like, hey, by the way, it's um, it's cust- what do you say, customary, custom, yeah, customary. it's customary for our culture that a guest brings something. Yeah. What do you, what do you, are you thinking of uh, bringing anything? If not, maybe pick up a bouquet or, or something yeah. small. And it's, again, it's not about money. It's about the gesture. Yeah. So Riley says, okay, I do need to learn about your culture, but what about you? When will you learn about my culture? For example, you called me fat and ugly in front of other people. In America, that's rude, especially when a woman says that about a man she's with. Yes, and he made a, an interesting point because he's like, I'm already standing out. I'm six something. How tall, how tall is he? I, I don't know. I didn't write that. He said he's yeah. like, I'm six four. I'm black and I'm, I'm already standing out and people look at me and he said he feels like a spectacle a spectacle thank you and he's like and then you talk talk about me being fat and ugly he's like that just is not doesn't feel right he's like i don't i don't find it funny yeah and And we don't find it funny either yeah i didn't even think about race but he's not wrong like i can totally understand why he would feel this way and finally violet starts to understand that oh Okay, maybe I do need to change a little bit. And she apologizes. Yeah, so things seem to be good because mm-hmm. he apologized, she apologized. They decided to let's start fresh, let's work on the communication, mm-hmm. let's get to know each other a little more and l- learn about our cultures. Let's have a dinner. Let's have a let's have a, a nice date night, a dinner night. And Violet's like, okay, I'll wear a sexy dress. All right. So they both showed up at the rooftop of the Rex Hotel. Except <laughs> at different times. He showed up there and was sitting there. And then she shows up. I think it's his hotel. Okay. Go to his room. Really? Yes. Why would you? Are you guys not a couple? Are you guys complete strangers? Don't you find it so strange that he's just sitting at the table and she shows up? Well, no. In this scenario, I don't because it's his hotel. If the reservation was for eight, I, why would she come to to his hotel? Room? I think I would be like, I'll meet you in the lobby. We'll oh. go to the we'll go to the restaurant together. Oh, a lobby, yes. But I just, not the hotel. Room. I don't know. It just seems so strange that she's just. Oh, it's she seems like an escort. She's just always showing up. That's so true. I so. never thought of it, but. Riley's looking sharp, wearing a all white. Mm-hmm. She Violet was wearing this like backless dress. Wearing her sexy dress. They both complimented each other, looking beautiful. Yeah, and they start talking about the future together. She asks, "If I'm gonna be your wife, what happens if your sister doesn't like me?" And Riley says, "Well, in America, it's very important for family and friends to get along. But if we're married, you're my wife." It doesn't matter what anyone says. That's very true. I know a lot of people who don't, like don't get along. Oh, no, I was joking. I oh, think. everyone loves you. But Thank you me. don't get along with their in-laws or the oh, yeah. siblings of the other person. And it's just, it's sad. I, it's Unfortunately, you don't get along with everyone, right? But I have to say, I feel very fortunate that we both get along with our fans. because. Definitely. Oof, it must be well, tough if we're you close, don't. We're close to our family. And so if you weren't able to get along with my parents, it would affect me because I have a close relationship with my parents. Yeah. And vice versa. If it was like Brandon from yeah. the other way and Mary doesn't get along with his mom, well, it's like he doesn't really get along with his mom. So it doesn't yeah, matter that's that That's a good much. point. But okay. So it doesn't matter. You're my wife. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Except I do have this friend, Tiffany. Uh, she's like my sister. Would you mind talking to her? Bad idea, Riley. Especially because this is the no negativity date. Yeah. Because when he brought something up, she's like, no, 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 no negativity. Mm-hmm. And he apologized. Like, all right. All right. Well, Tiffany did not know about this no <laughs> negativity idea date. Yeah, she didn't get the memo. And Violet is very open to this. She's like, absolutely, I would love to meet your friend, thinking they're just going to say hi and politely smile at each other. Yeah, it was, to me, it was a little strange because Riley FaceTimes Tiffany, then hands the phone to Violet and says, I'm going to go to the bathroom, you two talk. Yeah. I would hate that. 
I'd be like, if you want me to talk, sure, but like stay here. You're the mutual connection. Why don't you be here? Yeah. To help facilitate. Also, why would this? you talk at di- like you're having a nice romantic dinner? Like you can talk to Tiffany tomorrow. Yeah. The day. I don't know. Yeah. So Tiffany's on the phone. She starts with some niceties. Oh, you're beautiful. Heard you might be the one. But tell me, Riley mentioned you guys were on a dating app and you stayed on it even after you told Riley to get off of it. Yeah. And so at that moment, Riley comes back from the bathroom and he gets very defensive of Tiffany because Violet is like, well, what is she? Why is she saying this? What's, what's going on? He's like, I just answer her. I answered all your mom's questions last night. Yeah. And I didn't like that. No, I didn't. I didn't like it either. Don't use Tiffany to do your dirty work. Yeah. If you have these questions, ask them yourself. Violet kind of just pretended not to understand yeah. for like a minute what was going on. And then she just went silent mm-hmm. and, and didn't answer. Yep. And the segment ended. But I didn't like it either. If you want to have this conversation, don't have it on the no negativity night. Exactly. But have it the next morning. Yes. And don't use Tiffany. Like Tiffany should not be fighting his battles. Tiffany can say hello and get to know her. Yeah. But she should not be asking the questions that he hasn't even asked yet. Yeah. Also, you don't even know where your relationship stands right now. You guys are pretty much on the rocks. It oh, was, yeah. You guys were almost done a couple oh, yeah. hours earlier. Is now really the time to be introducing Tiffany into this? Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Not a good idea. And it seems like the no negativity date is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Let's go to my absolutely favorite couple. Yeah. Ooh, let's this is the to- couple that makes me need a drink because Christian needs a drink. Cleo and Christian. And let me begin with this. Back on... Uh, was it, I think it was the other way, with Chris and Jamie, right? Yeah. We all were saying that Chris has drug problems and Chris does this and that, but we were kind of just like judging it based on her behavior. We didn't know anything, any specifics, right? There, she, Besides her legit back pain and her like legit prescription pills. Right, she talked about her need for medication, yeah. but she never talked about her abuse of that medication. Yes. For Christian, he... I hate to say, but he has a drinking problem and And he he has a public drinking problem. Yes. And I I guess we all, I was at a phase that I was drinking, partying a lot in my early twenties. But once you like hit 30, I guess that you were trying to have a relationship. I feel like if you still cannot keep your drinking to a, a, so like a social level, then you have a problem. Here's the downfall of Christian. He is 30, but he is at the point in his life mentally where he still thinks it's cool yeah. to have a drinking problem. And that's that's the issue. He thinks it's cool that he's drinking whiskey straight at 9 a.m. Yeah. He thinks it's cool that he's talking to girls and drinking on the flight. I thought that too when I was 19, but you get to a certain exactly age and point. you go, it's actually cool to have a sober night. It's actually cool to not need to drink. It's actually or, cool to be faithful. Or here's the thing. We all enjoy our drinks. And when you go for your yearly checkup, your doctor is like, well, how often do you drink? And we all you say cut that number so in half. Yeah. social. Yeah. I always say I'm a social drinker because that's the, that's the case. And I honestly, the last time I get actually drunk, was at my mom's 60th birthday party and it was because we were drinking for 12 hours straight mm-hmm. and it just got to me. But when we go out with John or have a drink at home, we don't get drunk. I don't remember the last time I got drunk just by drinking socially with you. Like it, we just yeah. don't do it anymore because you hit certain age, certain age that I actually do enjoy the drinks I drink and I just want to... Stop at that. Let me have a few for the taste and the, maybe the little buzz. I don't need to go hardcore drunk and puke the next day. I, it's also hard for me to get super drunk at a certain age because we have a few drinks and we get tired. And we're <laughs> like, we should probably just go to bed. As opposed to when you're 20, you have those few drinks, you get more energized somehow and you keep drinking. Very true. I we have a little, a little bit of an old soul that we just love going to these like old bars that you just like sip on a, an expensive drink and you have two of them and you're good with it. Yeah. Instead exactly. of like drinking all night long. Like I'm, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm seriously past that point. I guess if there was an occasion, we go out with a bunch of friends we haven't seen in a while. So yes, 
I can definitely go all night long, but it would take me some time to recover, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's cool anymore just getting sick the next day. It's just like, it's too much work. It's too much work for me. But Christian is kind of stuck in his 20s and thinks that, yes, drinking all the time and drinking with everyone is a cool thing to do. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about it. It's the first morning in London. We learn Christian gave Cleo a, a good night kiss, but then slept with his back towards her. Yeah, for her, she feels a little disappointed that there were like no cuddles, no hugs. Well, Cleo, Cleo tells Christian, I was hugging you some of the night. And Christian goes, you were big spooning me? <laughs> and Cleo's like, yeah. Uh, but she was hoping for more affection. But hey. It's it's only night one. How much do you love when I big spoon you? I love when you're the big spoon. Right? I love it, yeah. It yeah, would, I, I, can... I always feel like you sit in my lap. Yeah. Well we, we call it uh, each <laughs> other's nest. Ne we call each other's nest. We say, Oh, <laughs> come get in my nest. And then sometimes we I say, No, no, you get in my nest. And <laughs> we don't do spooning. Spooning is, is is too basic. It's too basic. We do nest. We do nest. Get in my nest. Um <laughs> So, okay. So then Cleo takes out this box and she says, I need to get my juice on. And so she starts putting on this gel. It's an estrogen gel. Yeah, it's a uh, topical hormone. She explains she doesn't do the pills because it's more harmful and the, the gel just goes right into the bloodstream. So she, she applies. But for Christian, it's, it's starting to feel a little weird because it's almost like TMI for him seeing her putting the estrogen gel on because in his head she sees Cleo as a woman as his yeah. girlfriend right yeah. seeing this behind the scenes how she became a woman how she keeps her hormones intact it's something he just didn't think of a little peek behind the curtain yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, he, it makes him feel a certain way and I just wish he told her I just wish he like, opened up and in a nice positive way well yeah, I don't I don't think you can judge Christian for how he feels about this. It's so new, right? I if I he would if he had zero questions or zero hesitations about it, I'd be like, is he being serious? Like anyone in any sort of new relationship, no matter what the circumstances are, there's always questions, right? Absolutely, but I do judge him still for him ha being influenced by his friends and family. And still saying I'm hetero as fuck, but let's see. Like that, I almost feel like it's insulting to Cleo in a Why? way. Why? Because he's trying this as a test to see, like, all right, I'm heterosexual. But isn't it but a test? I, maybe I can make it work. But I almost, isn't it a test? Here's, here's why I find it a little offensive to her because of what he says out loud. And I still believe that he doesn't fully know his sexuality, but he's not cool enough to open up, open up about it. So he's doing this thinking, well, this will give me all the answers, but he's not, he's not verbalizing it. He basically, the way he talks about it is like, oh yeah, maybe my friends are right. Like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm heterosexual. I don't know how that's going to work. It's like, don't go there. You are going for it. You are in a relationship. So just say, well, I need to see how that's going to work. And don't question it and don't question her because you know, it's not like she didn't tell you that she's transgender. You're going to fly to London and find out. No, I know. But the first time you do anything and maybe test isn't the raw, the right word, but the first time you do anything it is a learning experience and you're finding out if it's something you like and you're finding out how it's going to go. I'm not going to say the first time I was with you was a test, but being with a foreigner and, and someone whose English isn't the first language and is from another country, like it's a learning experience and you, it, and you have to say, oh, is this going to work? Am I going to be able to do this? True. Correct. I, I see your point and I was honest with you about me being foreign, right? Well, but <laughs> <laughs> but for for him, it's like you were excited and open about a meeting. He's been questioning it because his family has been influencing him. And the way he talks about it, it's like, listen, if you know you're going to meet Cleo, who is a transgender woman, not fully transitioned, and you keep just saying, yeah, I'm hetero as fuck. Like, I don't know how that's going to work. Like, I'm, I'm a little concerned about it. But isn't it. that I almost a compliment to Cleo then? Saying, I'm hetero, I'm straight as fuck. 
and I'm going to be with Cleo, that's saying Cleo is a woman. Oh, Cleo is a woman. Of course she's a woman. Well, she's a trans woman. Yeah, yeah, but all I'm saying is that I think he's lying to himself and the way he verbalizes it is a little rude to her. Okay. All right. You get my point? Yeah, I mean, sure, sure. I think so. So, okay, let's talk about the day. Okay. Because... Christian says, I don't usually plan the day. I just, I want to go and explore. This is a new city for me. I want to go check it out. Cleo, not totally thrilled to hear this because she has anxiety and she's autistic. And so she likes to be able to predict her world a little mm-hmm. bit more. Right. But Cleo doesn't want to voice those concerns. She doesn't want to ruin Christian's time in London. So she's like, let's go for it. Yes. And Christian is a big James Bond fan. <laughs> so he wants to see all the sights. And I was going to expect him to drink some martinis yeah, as James shaking. Bond. Not stead. Exactly. But uh, no, that's not what he does. But they, yeah, they do end up going to a bar for a drink and he's babing her, which I think is a good sign that shows a level of comfort. He's and what? Babe. Babe. Oh. Right? He's like babing her. And I think that sh- like Statler and Dempsey oh, yeah, weren't babing yeah. each other. So I think like there's this level of comfort with like babe, babe, right? So... Christian, they get a drink and he makes a toast to them finally getting together and he brings up how he was tired last night and he hopes it didn't make Cleo think he wasn't attracted yeah. to her. And Cleo's like, no, don't worry, I wouldn't sleep with you on the first night anyway. Well, Christian is oh. going for a boss because he's oh, like, whiskey boy. kiss, oh, it usually boy. takes me like two to three drinks to like <laughs> karaoke and dance and you know, like, can we just go to like a lively place and... <laughs> Poor Cleo, she's like, you know, I want him to have a great time in London. So she agrees. Yeah. So they get to this bar. It's crowded. It's loud. It's colorful. It's like a typical English pub. Yeah. Uh, Not not exactly Cleo's idea of a a great spot. Just think about it for a second. She gets anxious at the airport, right? Mm -hmm. Where people, yes, rush around, but most of them are sober. Right. This is... Tight space with everyone drinking, loud music, a lot of colors, a lot of simulation for her. <laughs> Christian doesn't think of that even once. No, Christian goes, oh, this is like a physical representation of my mind. Oh, boy. And he goes, let's let's get a drink in you. I, I want to I, I wanna see how you are when you loosen up and you have a drink in you. And so the drink comes and Christian goes, I'm just going to go to town on it for a minute. What, what? did he say? The dr- like the drink arrives and it's this big cocktail. Yeah, he goes, yeah. He's like, hold on, I'm just gonna go to town on it for a minute. What does it mean? Just, I'm just gonna drink the shit out oh, of this. Boy. Like, don't like, don't expect me to talk. My mouth's gonna be busy sucking down this alcohol. Oh boy. And then he tells the story <laughs> of the flight over. Oh yeah. Oh, he's like, I have a crazy story for you. So I had a couple of drinks on the plane, and by a couple, I mean ten. And I was walking through the aisle. <laughs> And there was this blonde girl looking at me. Well, at first he was like, it was all dark. I was like walking. I didn't really see everyone sleeping. And there's this blonde girl just wondering what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. And he's like, so we started talking. And these these girls were young. I'm talking like 21. And we were talking <laughs> for a while. And I thought, you know, let me offer them a nightcap. So being the gentleman <laughs> that I am. I went back to the flight attendant to ask for a round for me and the ladies. And the flight attendant <laughs> said, no, sir, we've heard about you. Yeah, you're cut off. You're Which means cut off. This means that he was so wasted. He must have been wasted and bothering people. Oh, that's the real story is he was drunk, falling all over people. Oh, yeah. Trying to chat up these young girls. Oh, yeah. And the flight attendant was like, sir, you're going to need to go back to your seat. Oh, yeah. Like, he would be the guy that you and I would freaking hate on the plane. Absolutely. Yeah, they'd probably have to make, like, an emergency landing somewhere because this guy was intoxicated and, and ruined everybody's trip. Well, here's the thing. You get an open alcoholic in the sky with an open bar. Yeah. It's not good. Not good. And But he's, like, having a kick out of this story. He's, like, proud of it, laughing it off. And Cleo is like, yeah, like, this is, uh, so you were... You were just flirting with these girls? Right, because that's the theme of the story, yeah. is you were chatting up these young girls trying to get yeah. them drunk. And he's like, does it bother you? None of my exes really care for me talking to other women. It's just all like platonic, just having a conversation. Yeah, and he, he turns around uh, and starts chatting up the, the British young girls celebrating their 26th birthdays. 
yeah, and it was pretty off-putting. I was like, this is not yeah. cool. But then he at least introduced Cleo to the group. I thought he was going to ignore her the yeah. entire time. He's like, no, this is Cleo. Uh, come on, do you want to get closer geez, to the group? This is Cleo, my girlfriend. Yeah, this is Cleo, my girlfriend. Do you want? Come on, Cleo, like, scoot up. Do you want to get closer to the group? And she's like, no. Like, I want to just, I'm here to meet you. Yeah. We don't know each other. Like, let's stop involving other people in our relationship. Can we just talk and get to know each other? Yes. Right? Plus, the, it was very overwhelming and yeah. claustrophobic, and she just wanted to leave. Yeah. And so now Cleo is starting to question yeah. the relationship. I Ooh. mean, for a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. Christian needs to dry out a little bit. What does he do for a living? Do we know? Uh, I forget. I like hope he's like a bartender or something. I hope he's not. It's a terrible occupation true. for him. That's very true. Terrible occupation. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know, but whew, what an episode. Whew, is that it? What do you mean is that it? We're, uh, this is a long episode. Really? Over an hour and a half. Oh my gosh. Could not stop talking. Cannot stop. But guys, if you want to hear us keep talking, Patreon and Supercast, where we're talking about 90 Day the Other Way. Woohoo! And, and if you think... This season is wild. Have you heard about Brandon and Mary? Ooh, <laughs> oh boy. Have you heard about them? Because they are something else. Out of control. Patreon.com slash Mary Reality. Mary reality.supercast.com. We're doing free seven-day trials right now because why not? Christmas in July. Exactly. Give you a little try before you buy over there. Nice. Yeah. So we're doing that. Also, we're on Instagram at Mary Reality Pod. Okay, yes. it's, a, it's a good time over there. You can message us. We post some memes once in a while. We keep you updated on the schedule. So check it out. Threads also. Oh, at, yeah. At Mary Three Reality Pod. Uh, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening right now. If you're on the free feed, that way whenever we drop something, you'll get it right to your device. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hard as Brit's review. Thank you, Brit. Ten stars. Well, Ten five stars. Ten stars and... All everything we stand for. Everything we stand for, Brit stands for as well. So thank you, Brit. Amazing thank review. You. If you haven't left a review, be like Brit. She's the best. You guys are the best. So please leave us a review if you haven't. All right. That is it. I've said it all. I've said it all. Teresa, it seems like she has more to say, but I think Always, but she'll say it. Said it all for now. She said it all for now. I've said it all. It means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.